Hello. Got a song here, working on the same guy's record. Uh, this one is a lot more mellow, and the word vibey was used, which can mean a million different things. But he did give me a reference, a few references. Let's see if I can pull that up real quick. Uh, this one isn't so honky-tonk and has more of an ambient feel. We were going for more of a Ryan Adams or Hayes Carl vibe. I'm kind of hearing slide guitar in the solo section, but up for other ideas. Speed Trap Town by Jason Isbell isn't the best reference, but it's the only one I can think of at the moment. Soulful, vibey, and southern. Okay. It seems pretty, pretty straightforward, uh, given the song. I wrote a chart. And this chart, uh, this might look a little bit different than some of the charts you've seen me write for the songs I'm working on. This has an odd time signature. It's in 4-4, but the odd bars drop a beat. So I have that written out like this. You see two beats on the four, one beat of five, and then a full measure of one. So I guess you could say it alternates between three and four, or maybe it's really in seven, but I hear it as straight 4-4 time with just a dropped beat. So the way that sounds is like a, um, so one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So it's not like that, that bar with the missing beat, it doesn't feel like three, four time. It doesn't feel like six, eight either. It just, it, Feels like 4-4 with a dropped beat. That, that's the best way that I um, can think to describe it. So the song's pretty mellow, um, pretty wistful. Uh, nostalgic. So I'm, I'm going to lay like a tremolo. position. Let's see what happens.
tuning in between the spots that I want to play. I just cannot get this G string to stay in tune. Um, rather than pick it up there, I've got a program. I'm going to listen from the top and see if, if the tuning is wide enough for me to go back and cut all these spots. So let's see here. to where I come back in. That doesn't bother me. Back after the next verse. I'm going through that chorus too because I kept playing. there. Uh, let's get in on the chorus. up a point here. Um, I see guitar players try to throw some vibrato on a chord <laughs> and most of the time what they do is they're holding the chord and they shake the guitar. I didn't do anything. Nothing at all. Um, I don't have any formal training but I have read a lot of guitar books I remember checking out a guitar, or sorry, checking out a book on classical guitar playing uh, from the Topeka Public Library back when I was a kid. And I didn't really get that far into it. Um, I learned a couple of classical pieces. There were entire chapters devoted to how to file your nails on your right hand, and there were different strokes. You did a, uh, you, you would pluck um, I forget what that's called, but then there was a rest stroke, like like basically like alternate picking with your fingernails, which is awesome and crazy. And I was I was a teenager. I didn't want to grow the nails out on my right hand and I don't know, look weird. I thought it would look weird, so I didn't do it. I just would play with my fingertips and have the noise of my fingertips brushing the nylon string. That's become a thing now, um, but it was you know, quote unquote wrong back then. Well, one thing that that book talked about was vibrato. And classical guitar vibrato is very different, very different from, um, you know, like blues playing or something. Like, you know, when you, you 
see a blues guy or your typical electric guitar player hit vibrato on a note, it's like... They're wiggling the strings back and forth. Well, that's become its own kind of sound, but it's not vibrato in the traditional sense from the classical world. Um, all you're doing is pulling the note sharp from its resting pitch. You aren't going above and below, you're just going up and back down to the note, up and back down. Because whichever way you push the string, you push this way, you're going sharp both directions. Right? You're not going below the note. Um, well, the way violinists and fiddle players do it is that their finger rolls on their fingertip. Um, they sort of roll over their own fingertip and go around the note in pitch, both up and down. And classical guitar players do this as well. Like you are, you are not um, hitting the note and vibrating it like this. You're, you're. Let me turn the tremolo off. It's a lot more subtle. But you can hear there's a bit of vibrato there. Because what I'm doing, um, it's fretted, so I'm not like changing the location of where I'm fretting the note the way a, a violinist does when they roll on their finger, you know, um, with the string uh, instead of perpendicular to the string. Um, but what I am doing is changing the string tension. So pulling it one way or the other changes the string tension. And so it kind of, you get a subtle pitch vibrato. Well, if you're going to put any kind of vibrato on chords, you can't do it by shaking the whole guitar. I see it a lot with acoustic guys. There's a end of a song. They do that. That's doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> So you might have noticed the end of that uh, chorus that I just played, I was playing these three notes. It's kind of a, a G chord, B, D. Now I'm catching the A above, so it's really, uh, it's like a G add nine, but just a piece of it. And then I'm, uh, there's a very subtle vibrato that I'm applying because I'm I'm doing the classical thing, you know, of like manipulating the string tension. I I go back and forth. I I employ both without thinking. Um, I play that whole thing with normal guitar player vibrato. And yeah, the neck is moving a little bit, but I'm not holding the strings. I'm not holding the strings stationary and then just wiggling the neck. It's, it's, I'm actually moving the strings with my fingers and that in turn moves the neck. So, you know, fiddle players, a lot of their vibrato is their pinky right? And they're moving along the length of the string instead of perpendicular to it. And I remember that one chapter in that classical guitar book as a teenager. And then I met a guitar player in college that I thought was really great. And he was first a violinist. And he had that same way of playing. His, his guitar neck didn't hang up like this. It was kind of parallel to his body or even headstock down a little bit. And when he played um, vibrato or whatever, it was very, very much pinky oriented. And he would manipulate the string tension and get a vibrato, which was similar to how he played his violin. I thought that was really interesting. Again, because traditional guitar player vibrato, all you're doing is pulling the string sharp. You're not, you're not going above and below the pitch of the note. You're just going from the note's pitch, sharp, sharp. Sharp. That's it. I don't, I don't think it's wrong, necessarily, but um, there are other ways to do it. And it, it's definitely become the right thing now. Now that's all we work on. We try to get a real soulful 
vibrato, you know, that matches a vocalist. Like you play a note, and then you kind of shake it, shake it a bit. Not too crazy, unless you're trying to be really um, convey a lot of emotion or a lot of, uh, what do I want to say? angst or intensity, like a, a big solo or, or whatever. But I just wanted to talk about that, that thing that I was doing here at the end of the chord. I'm actually getting vibrato um, in a different way. So we can move on. Let me get my tremolo back on. Okay, so... back in in the back half of that verse. This is um, the verse after the chorus. And all we have after this, verse, the verse after chorus one, we have another chorus, and then there's a solo. And was it the whole solo? Yeah, slide guitar for the solo. So I'm not splitting it with anybody. So it's kind of a long solo. It's um, it's actually nine bars. Uh, it's, it's eight bars, but it ramps down with an extra bar at the end into a down outro verse. So I'll worry about that on another pass. G string. And that's a little flat too. Here's another tip. Um, I'm gonna replay that whole solo section. When you're playing chords on guitar, uh, the higher you go, greater your chances of being a little bit out of tune are. Because you, we're tuning to the open string, right? And my guitars are all set up really well. This is a vintage 69 Les Paul. Um, it's in great playing shape. It's also like totally straight. I think there might be one replaced pot in it. Otherwise, it's, it's all original. <coughs> Excuse me, even the tuning keys these are the original tuning keys, so the old waffle back um, Les Paul custom tuners, and it's a it's a one piece body. It's before they went to the pancake body. It's also a pre volute guitar, no volute on the back of the neck. Um, it is a three piece neck though, which you can barely see in the right light in the headstock. Uh, Anyway, all that to say, it's a great playing guitar, great sounding guitar. But today, music is made um, in the box, meaning there are uh, a lot of it's software, a lot of the sounds, a lot of the instruments you hear are synth driven. And the pitch and the tuning is all tempered so that it sounds perfect to your ear. Well, guitar exists, the instrument itself exists outside of that world. It is 
a study in imperfection and you're constantly trying to temper everything to where it sounds right. It might look right on the tuner and then you start playing. It's like, why is that out? Well, I know with certain guitars, like if I'm going to spend all my time up here, I'm not going to tune my open strings perfectly. I'm going to tune the string to where I know that it's going to put these notes in tune more so than the open string. Um, all that to say, this, this part I was playing underneath the solo. When I go up to this D chord all the way up here, I feel like it's just a little out. So what I want to do is stay down the neck and, and switch, like stay in the same position and switch strings instead of sliding up on the same two strings. That's better. So let's just see if I can. I did just tune this guitar down a half step uh, right before I started filming because this song's in C sharp and I want to play open chords. Um, every time I do that, there's a little bit of maybe I didn't pull on my strings enough and they weren't seated seated properly. But I feel like I, I fight tuning just a little bit every time I change by going up or down a half step, just a little. All right, let's find that, uh, find where that solo starts, is it? Yeah, right after here, this bar. I'm going to go through that again, <clears throat> start right on that solo. having that note ring out in the middle of my final diamond there. So I was going. I don't want that still ringing out. Maybe that's the move. a slight retard on that last diamond just laying it back a little bit that can be so hard for guitar players to do we uh we are not a bunch who likes to relax <laughs> our instrument is traditionally something used to convey energy well traditionally meaning in rock music i guess energy and angst and excitement um, it's hard for us to learn how to relax and to lay back, lay back in the pocket, but it's really important. So one of my previous videos talks about that. One of the most recent ones, how I learned to play behind the beat. Um, you should check that out because, uh, because I think a lot of people treat it like I'm going to feel where the beat is and then play right behind it and there's this 
kind of feel that you hear in their playing because you can hear that they're thinking of it that way. And that's not it at all. It's just being as relaxed as possible and not carrying any tension anywhere in your body, whether I'm talking about your feet or your jaw or your right arm, shoulder, neck, anything you're clenching and holding tension will cause you to anticipate. Or it's, it's anticipating is evidence of that tension. So it, when I learned how to like actually relax, that's when my playing started to feel good. Um, I don't think there are really any tricks to it other than practicing um, with a metronome and making yourself relax and sticking with it. Uh, not to get too philosophical on everybody, but something that I think we suffer from in today's society. <laughs> I'm going to sound like an old guy, I guess. People these days, meh. You know. Something I think we honestly suffer from today is a lack of um, devoting time and focus to something, whether that's playing guitar or, you know, lifting weights or building something that takes a really long time. We tend to overestimate what we're able to accomplish or how we're able to grow on a very short time scale. And then we get discouraged because we we're not seeing results that we expect right away. But the flip side of that is that we underestimate what kind of change and growth can happen over long term, right? Like I always tell people who ask me how I practice, it's like, well, I just, I play music all the time consistently. And, um, when I wasn't working consistently, I still played. I think spending a half an hour focusing on something, intensely focused on something every day, is going to beat playing for three hours on Saturday. Um, you will grow more when you do it consistently for shorter periods of time. Um, I had one practice regimen where I would practice slide for 30 minutes and then mandolin for 30 minutes. And I'd go back and forth. Slide for 30, mandolin for 30. Slide for 30, mandolin for 30. And that would be two hours. And um, there's something about bouncing back and forth between wildly different, um, what do I want to say, motions, motor skills, uh, that helps you retain better what you, what you did. I certainly felt that way. Um, I read something about that. I, I wish I could remember if it was an article or a book. Somebody was talking about practicing and you should do, you should do two totally different things and go back and forth between them for 15 or 30 minutes. And you will retain more doing that consistently than just doing one thing consistently, which you'll retain more from than doing that one thing for a long period of time, like once a week. So 30 minutes a day, you can really, you can really move the ball down the field over time if you're consistent. So anyway, my first track is done. Um, I don't know what else this needs aside from that slide thing. I could maybe hear like a single note strap part. In the choruses, like a lower, lower guy. Let's let's just see. That's too much, too much uh, 
stuff. But we're gonna try it. turned on a delay shouldn't do that some of these big old room, uh, rows of dead space where I'm not playing. And uh, now all I need is a slide solo. So we're in C sharp. My my favorite slide guitar lately to play slide on has been my Jazzmaster. Um, it just sounds great. That's kind of why I haven't been playing the Strat so much. So I've been playing the Jazzmaster so much. It's just kind of a slightly different take on a Fender with vibrato sound. 
you know. It can sound bigger and it can sound thinner. It's kind of weird. Um, I like them both for sure. So, let's see. I'm going to listen to that solo section. so well when the strings are tuned to the key you're in. There's just something about the way things resonate. When you're when you're on the 12th fret, because that's where a natural harmonic node exists, you get a little extra sauce when playing slide, like just holding a vibrato there. Or at the 5th and 7th frets where the other major nodes are so Ballpark, gotta really. People say stretch the strings. I guess I guess you're stretching them, kind of. I feel like I'm just seating them properly, like making sure nothing's hung up. I'm not stuck on a coil up here that um, where the the tension is is messed up across this point or this point. They need to be properly seated. And when you drastically change tension by retuning, that can hang things up and, and mess you up. And it'll, it'll seem like it's in tune, but once you play something and you hit, you strike the string, then it might jump into proper position, which it wasn't before, and then your string is out of tune. So I try to make sure that that's all I must have bumped that knob. Best sounding delay pedal ever. The original DM2. No one can touch it. I'm going to do something weird. slide in standard tuning, it's all about what kind of chords you can get with a flat bar. Flat bar meaning straight. You're not trying to catch like a, I'm not trying to catch notes that exist on different frets. I mean, that's really hard to do. Some of the like Hawaiian lap steel guys, when they're playing, 
like this, like they'll they'll turn their bar and, and get intervals that you can't get with a flat bar. That's totally cool. Kind of hard when I'm playing, this is considered Spanish style. <laughs> um, fun fact, that's where the ES comes from in ES-335, Electric Spanish. And it's a guitar that you play. I mean, back, you know, the original classical guys were had a little footstool and the guitar was on their left leg and everything's straight and whatever. Nowadays, it's kind of like, you know, I'm just kind of tucking under this arm and my whole playing surface, rather than being out here, is, is more here. Um, anyway, it's harder for me to get those sort of angled grabs with the uh, catching intervals. So I try to keep a flat bar. Well, in standard tuning, you have a triad with the um, fourth, second, and third strings. That's G, A, D. You also have a minor triad with the top three strings, the third, second, and first. That's E minor, F sharp minor, B minor. That's the advantage that standard tuning has over um, most of your traditional guitar open tunings. Like open E, you're literally playing... When you strum the open strings, this would be open E flat, I guess, because I'm down a half step. But you tune your fifth and fourth string up a whole step, your third string up a half step, and what do you know? That's those notes. So you get an act, you get a major triad. Well, there's nowhere you can play a flat bar with any combination of those strings to play a full minor chord. You can play parts of the major chord, like the one and the three. That's the three and the five of the minor, right? But you you have to play pieces of it. You can't play the whole thing. Uh, same way with open G. Open G tuning leaves. Fourth, fourth, third, and second strings alone. Those are the strings that already make a G chord. In this case, G flat, because I'm down a half step. But then you drop the fifth, sixth, and first strings down a whole step from E, A, E to D, G, D. So your guitar goes D, G, D, G, B, D. All notes in an open G chord. And the most famous use of that is... Keith Richards, obviously, he just got rid of the low D string so that he could play um, play uh, five string one finger chords. He'd play them like that, but what you'd hear is it's kind of hard to bar these three fingers and lift your finger up enough out of the way to get a note behind it to ring out. <laughs> And he'd do the whole... With all that ringing out, it's like really nice and full. It's like that, but you still have that note ringing out on top. Well, in open G, the whole guitar is a G chord. You can't play a full minor triad with, um, with that tuning. You can play pieces of the minor chord, of a minor chord. Um, but with standard tuning, I have a major triad and I have a minor triad. So on the same fret that I have a D, a D triad, I've also got B minor. Same fret I have G, I also have E minor, right? The relative minor is on the same fret, just a different set of strings, if that makes sense. Here's A. That would be A major. I'm fretting the note behind the slide. And then there's F sharp minor. So all that to say, 
there's a big emotional move in this solo where we go four, five, one. So much emotion in that. So I think what I want to do is play something simple and soulful and southern as directed and I want to land on that six minor chord in a really um, big way. So that's what I'm gonna do. We'll see what happens here. cool um i feel like in some of the in some of the gaps between the chord changes the piano is playing these licks and uh, it probably was stepping out there because there were such big holes and even though it's the middle of a solo nobody was playing a solo when he played because they're saving that till now so i wonder if it's more of an interplay with the piano and I'm doing less between the changes. Or if I just need to play the solo and like a solo and let them sort it out afterward. I'm gonna playlist that. I'll try and narrow this issue. playlist neither one of these two bother me um i think i think they're cool but i just want to do something that i really like I got a program. I'm, I'm just going to tweak one part of it.
just haven't figured out my last phrase. I like I like the. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Let's see. Maybe that's our last move. I just want to listen to it. So if I'm uh Same punch. That guy's just in and out. The, the next verse is so down, and uh, my other two guys are kind of swelling in a little bit. So I think I'm good. I'm going to send it off. And he's happy with the other stuff I've done so far. So developing trust. All right. Have a good one.